doing today we're back with another craft with me I can't believe it's Saturday already actually it's not Saturday but we'll pretend it's Saturday um, I'm actually filming ahead of schedule here just because I have a very busy schedule this week so I thought I would go ahead and get my filming in early uh, while we can so I am sitting here doing a little bit different knitting than I typically do on my videos so I am doing a craft with me, so feel free to do whatever crafting you want. Uh, I today am doing some knitting, but you are welcome to craft with however you feel that, that you want to. If it's cross stitch or diamond painting or crochet or scrapbooking or decoupage, whatever you want it to be. Maybe even macrame. Does anybody even macrame anymore? Anyways, today I am actually knitting a dishcloth. So it's been just over a year since I've learned how to knit. And I thought, lately I've been thinking about going back to my roots of knitting. One, two. And using up some of the yarns that I purchased at the beginning because, you know, I'm one of those people that whenever I start a new hobby, I go in hard and I buy a whole bunch of stuff and then it sits around. So I'm really trying to utilize a lot of the materials that I've purchased along the way. And so I have a lot of the cotton yarns from when I was learning how to knit. So I am currently using Louise's or Wild, Louise from Wildflower Flower Wool's pattern for super simple dishcloth, super simple diamond dishcloth maybe. And you can find it on Ravelry. I will link it below. It is the very first uh, d dishcloth pattern that I learned how to knit. It's a very simple design, and you can find it there on Ravelry. Louise is part of the Fiber Friends podcast that I know that we all know from Caroline off the grid but she also has her own uh, her own YouTube channel now called Wildflower Wool so if you're interested in knitting and uh, she is a knitting teacher so it's really neat to get a, a little bit different perspective on knitting and she's she just she's awesome she's a knitting designer and teacher and she's doing a crazy thing of starting a new design, a new pattern, or a new a new project every Monday. So go check that out if you're interested. So you can find that at Wildflower Wool. I will link that below as well. So I actually today, I feel like I'm talking very fast. Let me catch my breath as I finish this row.
Okay, so I went ahead and at the very beginning when, when we did the, the speed up, I went ahead and cast on this dishcloth. It's not looking like much right now, but you know, right now I'm, it's a diamond. It will be a diamond. So I, I'm currently working on my increases. What's nice about these dishcloths are that you can really, if, if you have a couple hours time, you can sit down and knit an entire dishcloth in one sitting. If you're watching, I can usually have one done within a movie or a little bit more than a movie. So it's nice to be able to take with me when I go to my friend's house and we have dinner and a movie or whatever. And I can sit there and it's something simple I can knit. You don't really have to think much. It's the same on every row going up the diamond for increases. And then it's the same on every row going down the decreases. So I am currently knitting with Knit Picks Dishy. And this is in the color of jalapeno. I'm not a fan of jalapenos, but this is jalapeno. Uh, a really nice green. It's a little washed out right there. It's a little bit greener than what, like a little bit more olivey than what it's showing there. It's not quite so foresty or hunter green. So, but I have, this is my, my dishcloth yarns here, and I have an entire bag full of dishcloth yarn that I am trying to use up as much as possible. So, I figure these are great gifts that I can be use, uh, preparing for Christmas or whatever uh, I need to have a quick and simple gift down the road so that's what I've been working on lately so just trying to use up what I have along with going ahead and being proactive with some possible Christmas gifts for this coming year and yes I'm saying Christmas for this coming year and it's still like 10 months away So thank you all for those of you who left wonderful comments last week on last week's craft with me video. On, I was uh, stitching on my winter wisdom. Uh, I some of you had kind of caught on to the fact that I wasn't quite myself last week, and I wanted to touch base on that a little bit because I think that's important to point out. You know, there are many times where, and I, you know, a a few commenters made reference to the fact that it seemed like I might have been getting a little burnt out from my videos and that's far from the truth uh, it's I'm definitely not getting burned out I appreciate everyone's concern for the the thought of getting burned out and that I'm you know I really need to focus on myself for a little bit it's really actually far from the truth uh, I don't want to say the truth it's, you know, I'm not calling you liars or anything. Last week was a bad week for me. With, and I'm not saying this to, you know, to arouse a lot of sympathy or empathy. I'm just, I wanted to bring it up because it was part of, it, it came up within my video. You know, last week was one of those times where because of the weather and everything going on in my life, I was suffering from a really bad migraine when I filmed my video. And I kind of put my video off until the very last minute, but I wanted to make a video. And the reason I wanted to make a video was because it's, it's like one of those things where you get invited to go out with friends and... You're feeling really crappy 
but you still want to go out and hang out with your friends because they're your friends and you want to spend time with them. And so that's kind of like how I felt last week. I was feeling qu pretty down for quite a few days and it, I was just to the point on Saturday where I was like, I need to spend time with my friends. And one of those things that, that I get to do by spending time with my friends is making videos and being able to interact through the comments and the videos. So that's kind of where I was at last week. I wasn't feeling the greatest because of a pretty bad migraine that took me almost until the end of Sunday to get over. And sometimes I force myself to do the routine and the regular because it helps me. I'm a routine based person. So I like to stay in a routine. I like to do the routine because then I feel in a lot of ways it kind of helps me get over the migraines a little bit quicker. It also helps me take my mind off of my migraines a little bit. And I'm doing something I enjoy doing. Might not come off that way in the video because I'm not feeling that great. And so I think, you know, we all have to appreciate the people that make videos. And I'm not saying I didn't, by the way, I didn't get any negative comments or feedback for this video, for the last week's video. So I'm not in any way complaining or anything. I, I, I'm just saying, you know, it. I was really, really grateful that I had time to spend with all of you last week with a little bit of stitching because it helped me take my mind off of my migraine for a little bit. So thank you. I have been cooking a lot more at home recently and so today after I'm done filming I'm going to be I have, I have been craving cabbage a lot and I think that's partially because it's been so cold here and I haven't really usually in the winter months I like cabbage a lot <clears throat> and I haven't had cabbage at all this winter so I bought a head of cabbage and I'm going to fry up some cabbage and noodles for some future meals here. And I don't know, you know, I know it's typically like a Polish, Slovak, Central European style dish. I learned how to make it from my grandmother and her and I uh, shared a love of the dish and so uh, I, I haven't had it yet this year so I've really kind of actually been craving it and usually I make it a few times a year and I haven't made it yet so I thought I'd make it this year all I do is I slice up the the cabbage in small slivers and then throw it in the uh, the skillet with some olive oil, salt and pepper. I uh, cut up an onion, throw that in just to give it a little bit of flavor, and then I uh, I have some pre-boiled 
pasta, which this time I think I have um, cavatappi, or I, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I have that the corkscrew pasta that I'm going to throw in. Uh, typically, I think it's made with egg noodles, but I don't have egg noodles here. So I'm going to throw that in, and I'll have it ready to go. And it's really good heated up as a leftover dish. And super simple. All you have to do is chop everything up and put it in the skillet and just let it cook down. And I, I like it on the crispier end, so I like to cook it a, a little bit extra long because then it gets nice and crispy and crunchy. So that is what I'll be making today for my dinner. So with these dish claws, all you have to do is knit back and forth, back and forth. It's super simple. Let me tell you, I made many of these when I first started learning how to knit, and I have never used I use them more for decorative, almost kind of like pot holders. I, I ha actually have a bunch of my plants setting on them just to protect the furniture from the, the flower pots which I really like and then I can switch them out as much as I want and but I also I do have a pile that I want to use for washcloths or dishcloths I don't use dishcloths on a regular basis I don't use dishcloths period I that's not the, how I wash my dishes I, as if I can if I can put it in the dishwasher I put it in the dishwasher and if I don't put it in the dishwasher, I typically use one of those Brillo style pads that has the, the, the coarse side on one side and the sponge on the other. That's just what I've always used. So the fact that I make all these dishcloths and I never use it is kind of silly, but I just never use one of the dishcloths. So I have gifted some to my mom who I think uses them for doily type decorative furniture protecting things. But which they are really good for because they're cotton so they absorb water or anything really nicely.
So this weekend is Nashville Needle Market. Uh, I'm curious if those of you who are watching that are stitchers or needle workers are interested in any designs that the uh, designers are putting out this year. Uh, I'd love to hear in your comments to this week what what designs you have either ordered from your LNS or which ones you have your eye on that you are interested in getting once they come back from Nashville or what you're ready to order online whenever this, they, they become available. I have my eye on a couple. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't really seen too many of the other designers yet. I've been eyeing up as much as I can. But at the same time, I'm kind of just holding out because they're new designs, so they're going to be available for a while. And I'm trying to save a little bit of money right now by not spending and using the things I have in my, in my collection. So what are, this week's question is going to be, what are the, the patterns that you are dying to purchase from Nashville Market this year. I'm curious if there's like an overarching trend for a specific design or style that is coming out this year that you are really interested in that the you know the, the majority of people are interested in so what is the the overall popular patterns this year? I have been busy with uh, schoolwork for my college courses. I can't believe it's already almost it's March already, which means that in collegiate world that means it's almost spring break. I think my spring break is the second week in March, so I will not have to have. I'm looking forward to not having any work that week, which is kind of nice. Typically in master's level courses, I always had to work straight through spring break. I never got a spring break off. So this is kind of nice that I won't have to worry about doing any assignments that week. But um, really, it's the fact of the matter is that by the time spring break comes around, the, the semester is practically over because I think the last class is, the last week of classes is the last week in April so we only have two months left of coursework so these courses this whole this whole year is flying by already it's already the end of February and you know it's one of those things where it's always funny that pe uh, people always think March is so much longer of a month because February is such a short month but really March is the same length as most other months but I think it's just because it follows up the shortest month of the year by and so it's three days longer than than the shortest day of the year that it just feels like it's so much longer but I know for and speaking to the teachers out there March always, I, I don't know about you, but for me, March always seemed like it was one of the longest months because especially this year with Easter being so late and for me, spring break is in, our spring break is the week after Easter. So we don't get done until, we don't have another holiday until Good Friday. So it's a long haul between now and Easter. 
because I think Easter this year is April 21st. So lots going on. It's a long haul, but that's okay because it's warming up. It will be warming up because it's going to be spring. So happy it's spring. And if Punxsutawney Phil was right, spring is right around the corner. As usual, if you have any suggestions or questions for me that you'd like me to answer in my Stitch With Me, Craft With Me, Knit With Me videos, please let me know in the comments below. As I, I do, I always, I always read the comments and usually try to remember to answer the, the questions in the next video. Sometimes I forget. So if I if I if you ask a question and I don't answer it, feel free to ask again or maybe ask in a different medium as in through Instagram or my email ginger.gerald.stitcher at gmail.com. That way I am bombarded by the question and I will be sure to answer that way. And I will be glad to, I'm always looking for, for material to talk about in these videos. Again, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, ginger.gerald.stitcher, for my more personal side of stitching and crafting. And then, of course, my business is at gingergeralddesigns, ginger.gerald.designs. Follow them both. I've been give, doing some giveaways on that in, on Instagram for the business. So the more the merrier because the more people that follow, the more giveaways I will do. And uh, looking forward to a lot of new releases here in the spring. Spring and summer. So looking forward to that. Working very hard and diligent to get some designs out and ready for all of you to enjoy. Of course with the Gerald twist. So I hope you all have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. It's the first weekend of March, so enjoy the, the weather and March coming in like a lion, hopefully going out like a lamb. And I will see you on the next craft with me, if not before. And don't forget to always be creative. See you guys later. Mm -hmm.